The Directorate of Education has closed 176 primary and secondary private schools. The party, the NRM, is claiming they brought about peace. It's widely agreed that more needs to be done to get more girls into higher education. How did you become a news anchor? I love the media and I love telling stories. I, I like a little bit of showbiz as well. Urban TV was a competition. It's called Rated Next. They were looking for the next presenter. I didn't win it, but I was in top 10. Mm -hmm. And with that, we were lucky enough to be retained even mm -hmm. after the competition. And slowly I started out as a reporter, which is what I really like to do, which yeah. is telling stories, filming, documentaries. But eventually when you, when you can tell your stories very well, it's so easy to also present them on TV and mm -hmm. it makes me a presenter. I like to tell compelling stories so that means I'm going to tell stories that have human interest in them. How easy is it to be a female news anchor on a TV station in Uganda? Well, I think we're still in a country that looks at TV presentation or the job of a TV anchor as some sort of flowery, not so important job. I think it's a very unfortunate because I think TV presentation is a serious job. It requires uh, for one to put a lot of thinking and how they're going to present. It requires for one to respect their audience, to, to know that whatever they're saying, whatever they're presenting might just change someone's life. Uh, journalism is still uh, male dominated, if you talk of journalism in general. But I think things are changing a little bit. Now we have at least women who are you know, pushing their creativity beyond the newsroom. And I think that's working well for Uganda. There's so many women who are doing fantastic things. And speaking about activism, you have an incredible project that you started yourself. Uganda Reading. That's, that's, that's the Uganda Reading. Project, mm -hmm. yeah. I had a very huge problem, you know, being able to read, opening a book, and even finishing one page was big trouble for me. So I decided after opening a book, after joining a book club with my friends, uh, Umshanga Book Club, I, I told them jokingly, you know what, I'm going to have to brand my reading. If I'm on this page, I'll tell the whole world and I'll tweet using the hashtag Uganda reading. And eventually that hashtag became uh, bigger than just solving my own problems of reading. I thought, okay, if it can help me, I think it could help everybody else who has a problem with reading, not just in Uganda, but in the continent as well. Tell us about some of the events that you are doing to get people reading. What's happening in the offline world? Okay, so offline we have uh, quite a number of exciting projects really that because we want to make reading fun. On top of that, we are trying to promote African literature, mm -hmm. in this case uh, specifically Ugandan authors, to tell people, hey, Ugandans are writing and they have fantastic stories, stories that you, you know, could entertain you, could take you out of this world and, you know, mm -hmm. put you on a bus to another place. And every month we have a challenge. We challenge Ugandans to read uh, one particular book that we choose. Mm -hmm. uh, every month or every? Every month. Every month. We choose a book that every Ugandan must and should read. By and a Ugandan books, author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've worked with uh, Joaquin Buembo. We did that with the uh, prisons when we launched our clubs in Uganda prisons, mm -hmm. uh, some 2,000, 3,000 uh, inmates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this month we are working with um, Zainab, Zainab Nantume. Mm -hmm. She's written a book and we are reading with uh, 10,000 market vendors at Nakawa Market. Mm -hmm. One uh, big project that we are carrying out right now is opening libraries uh, around the country. So we, we are starting with the regional ones. We already wa have one for the east. It's at uh, Wash and Wheels Hotel in Bale, mm -hmm. full-blown library. We even have supporters. The National Library of mm -hmm. Uganda is supporting us and providing books, but we also get our own members to donate those books and we get authors also to donate their books. The one thing I really want to change is the perception that if you want to hide anything from an African, then hide it in a book. I need that to change. The project is called How is Africa? I would like to ask you, how is Africa? You? Okay, Africa right now, I think, is growing. It's the best continent to be in if you're ambitious, if you understand opportunities, if you uh, have an eye to see where there's potential. This is the continent to be. Uh, the biggest thing about Africa right now, I guess, is the digital trend. Uh, we're growing at a speed of 3,700%. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody is, is getting onto, you know, the digital world. 
we have a weakness in politics and democracy, but I think we shouldn't focus so much on that sometimes. We must become positive, we must be optimistic and look into growth. And I think Africa is growing. Today when you go to universities, you'll find at least 40% of students in classes are girls and that is a big change that uh -huh. is definitely shaping how we think and how we look at women.